Charlton were the last team to beat Arsenal in a London derby 21 games and two years ago. And Arsene Wenger's side were steady at the Valley until the 27th minute when Charlton got a penalty. On this occasion, the Frenchman's eyesight didn't fail him. A gift, he called it, as Matt Holland, not renowned for theatrics a la Pires or Van Nistelrooy, tumbled over the legs of Lauren. The stage was clear for Paolo Di Canio to turn his first premiership goal for Charlton into a masterclass of mesmerising cheek. Arsenal awoke. Well, actually, Thierry Henry flicked his own turbo switch, dragging his team along in the slipstream. For 15 minutes, Henry ran the game. Alan Kerbishley saw it. He asked his players to double up. But when Scotty Parker overdid the aggression, Henry could take aim again. The perfect free kick from Arsenal's top scorer, and now arguably their most important player, even when Patrick Vieira is fit. Returning to the pace of the Premiership was too much for Paolo's hamstrings, but he shouldn't be out for too long. Losing Henri is every gunner's worst nightmare. But that was as close as they got to rippling the net again. Charlton retook the initiative. Colo Torre did superbly as Jason Newell saw the whites of the uprights. Then Jens Lehmann stuck on his line after that Kiev calamity, finger tipped over from Bryderson. Wenger did go for the win, using all his attacking options. On came Wiltor and Kanu for Bergkamp and Lundberg. And while the lanky Nigerian lumbered into dangerous positions, Ari was Charlton's only real worry. Injury hit, they were delighted with a point well made. Arsenal's eye focused on that penalty. Robert Pires was much criticised against Portsmouth for diving over a leg, allegedly. Was this any different? Yes, it was different because Robert Pires was touched on his run, and I don't think this, uh, this player was touched. We've had a couple against us this season which were quite iffy, and you know we've not been given anything ourselves, so I'll take that because it, it, it will go against us over the year, I'm sure, because we're not one of those big sides. It appears as though Arsenal are relying on you mm -hmm. for goals more than ever, I'm afraid. I don't know, you know, uh, a lot of people are saying that at the moment, but uh, I, I quite enjoy it because that's my job. Patrick Clivert, is he a possible option for you? At the moment, uh, I haven't made any decision and uh, not to buy anybody, not to go for whom I would go if I would go for somebody. So it's too early to speak about that. If we can go all the season like that, you know, without playing a tremendous football and, and, try and still getting points, you know, I think that's, that's, that's the most important thing and not maybe like play like great football and then at the end you don't get anything. Hmm, well, we'll get to uh, Arsenal and Chelsea and Manchester United. I suppose it's those three for the title of the whole permutations of the top three uh, shortly. But we'll just uh, try and clear up with the panellists uh, thorny issue of diving penalties, etc. There's been a few more examples over the weekend. We'll start with an email from, uh, from Chris Boyle in Belfast. Uh, your poll, which uh, he refers to um, an ITV website poll today, indicates only 55% of those uh, writing in think that Matty Holland dived. If it was an Arsenal player, it would be 100%. Well, I don't know about that, Chris, but, but if we start with this first example, Clive, of, of Matt Holland yesterday, how did you see it? Penalty? Well, I, I always go with my initial instinct in terms of seeing it for the first time, and I felt at full speed that Matty is expecting a challenge to come in from Lauren. I think he's expecting physical contact, and he, he goes <laughs> over. <laughs> he dies, he basically. <laughs> I don't think so, Andy. I don't <laughs> think so, because <laughs> I think... <laughs> How can that not have an The thing is, that isn't full speed, to be fair. I that's think. right. That is speed. true. That is that, true. That's where there's a difference. Yeah. And the, the Canio Paolo at his best. It's incredible how often, yeah. at full speed, something looks like. Yeah. And the ref gets one shot at it. We yeah, know absolutely. that. He only sees he it. He might not have a clear view of it or whatever. And at the same time, the game is a lot quicker than it was 20 years ago. The players are quicker, they're fitter. That is, it's difficult to tell. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he's the only one. I mean, all the other Charlton players immediately appeal for it. But Matty Holland, as he tried to get up, there was no appeal from him whatsoever. So I, I, I think he knew that Lauren didn't try to play him. And he's gone down a little easily. Yeah. Now, Arsene Wenger, it seems, saw this one, which is revolutionary all by mm -hmm. itself, but he seemed to suggest that this was at least comparable and maybe more of a simulation, as they call it, than, than Robert Perez. No, I think Perez still wins it for me, I have to be honest. I mean, this is just a, this is a blatant dive. He puts his right leg in there and looks for the contact there, and down he goes. Player gets booked in the perch. And that, that was so important, because that, that cost you know, Portsmouth a, 
Yeah, uh, this was 1-1 one, one against Portsmouth. It turned out to be a draw that, that perhaps a famous Arsenal didn't follow. really deserve. Yeah. But, but, I mean, are you looking to dive in? I mean, you, you guys know that anyway, diving in the box or Isn't whatever. Isn't I mean, that's what the clubs and the professionals are saying. Well, look, this is part and parcel. Ali, know, Ali knows as well as I. I think if you know that there's physical contact coming or you expect it, yep. that you, you, you're almost on your way before it actually happens. Mm. Now, the, the pace in which the game's played and the way it happens and the view that the referee gets <coughs> is very difficult to call between one or the other. It's a two -team not, the only thing that's getting a problem now is yeah, just it's, too it's, frequent. It's, I mean, years ago it was the odd little one, but now, I mean, we're talking about it every yeah. other day. Every well, week. See, the the yeah. Perez one there's different, Matt, because I, I know as a centre forward, I would sometimes invite the challenge. If I could, if I could reach the ball before the defender, I would, I, I would, sometimes I would wait to the defender was about to make the tackle, then I would take the ball, knowing that the defender would take me. Now that, that's an honest. I, I all right, well, both of you, well, all of you, have a look at the two incidents that came about in the in the, the game on Saturday between Bolton and Birmingham. One for each side, both booked for diving by the referee. I don't know how you all see this one. David Dunn in the first instance, he was booked uh, for this. I think that's a pen. Again, I, at full I speed, agree. it's quite different, isn't it, Andy, to, to slow speed? If he doesn't try to make such a meal of it in the current climate, if he just hits the floor, it is a pen. I mean, Campo has done very clever there, turn around, ask him for a yellow card, yeah. running the ref. He knows he's tripped him, mm. but David Dunn's made a meal of it. And this one, Stelios? If, if, if he goes down when contact was made, I wouldn't have queried it. No. But he waits for a second, his foot goes back down, and then he throws himself. Now, I know it's easy, again, on the replay to see it much more clearly, <laughs> but the referee on each occasion was pretty close to it. And I, I mean, I, I think he's both, right not to give both, because they're both yeah. exaggerated. I mean, in a way, you've got to give, cool, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. You've got to yeah. give the referee some, some credit. I mean, they get enough stick. Yeah, but the, the, the full speed is actually in the spirit of the game. It's a foul, it's a foul. Yes, indeed. But in the spirit of the game, the theatricality of those dives probably did the these players a disservice. This has been happening for years and years. These, this this <coughs> scenario has been happening when we were playing. All of it, you know, it's been happening for a well, long, absolutely. long time, I mean, Matt. Jim was saying, and Ali was saying, it's got worse and worse. I'm not so sure that's true. I mean, if we, we've pulled out a couple of old examples. Oh, <laughs> no. I well, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to touch Ali in case he goes down here. <laughs> yeah. yes, you know. Now, the, it, was, it was just the start of Colour TV. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, this is the 1984 <laughs> Scottish Milk Cup final, Celtic Rangers. <laughs> now, have you ever seen... <laughs> Do you get shoved in the back? I tell you. Short of a sniper <laughs> in the stand, he that, couldn't I have made more of a meal of it. in the stomach at the same yeah. time. Big Roy Aiken, that was, that was a stunning. That's a stone wall as it gets, that. <laughs> oh, I knew you'd say that. Bigger nudges in a the back of the kid. NME 1 2 with the goalkeeper. Yeah. 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 They should have been a yellow for the dive and another for the haircut. <laughs> I'm, I'm accepting it was a softer one. Now, it, very soft. Now, Clive, of course. <laughs> there's no way you're getting away with this. We found an absolute perler from Mr. Allen. Just talk us through this. We believe this is Man City against Luton. Well, it couldn't have been me. I didn't play for Man City. Oh, oh a nasty <laughs> challenge. Oh, and I waited till I got you in the box. You tripped over your well. own boot, no, outside no, the no, box, looking at the ref. Looking at the ref, begging I, for see. the. <laughs> and then you've got the audacity to score from You've the spot. hacked yourself down there, <laughs> a yard outside the box. <laughs> I never tried that one, Clive, to be fair to me. You should have done it, worked. <laughs> no no mistake from the penalty, of course. Exactly. I think there's a little bit of a badge kiss coming up as well. Yeah, there you go, see. You see? <laughs> Nothing changes. <laughs> You're a disgrace, the pair of We are, actually. Yeah, yellow cards. <laughs> Me and Jim never used to get in the box. Well, we looked particularly yeah. for Jim. We found, a bit, we found a bit of old footage of him getting a nosebleed on the halfway line. Yeah. But that was as close as it ever got. Lots of those. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Now, listen, to the serious stuff, well, I mean, not that the diving isn't serious, but to the title chat, um, again, for Arsenal mm. yesterday, having gone behind, it's Thierry Henry and this reliance on him being the only, it seems, goal scorer. It would seem to be a problem, particularly in Europe now. It seems to be an issue for them domestically as well, Jim. Well, there's no doubt others have got to start pulling their weight in mm. terms of contributing to the goals. I think if you wait a little bit, Perez really gets back up to speed with his fitness, and Youngberg is just yeah. back in the side. I think they will contribute, but what about this yesterday? I mean, he, he can only just keep doing this, Thierry Henry. It's the only one place he could aim at, that top corner. Dean Kiley's on that side, thinks he has it covered as well. That is absolutely sublime. I there's think very I, few can do that. I think without him, they they don't win the league. Mm. I don't. I, I think if they lost Thierry Henry for ten games, particularly now Vieira's out for the we hear three, I four think weeks. That's the Monday whether, match as well. So I think irrespective of whether Patrick, but I think Patrick's a massive player. Mm. But I just think that guy is everything to him. Yeah. I think without him, they lose such a such a threat. It's incredible. I guess. United's financial crisis later in the hour. But now it's a Highbury where Arsenal needed a penalty shootout to beat Rotherham. 
Darren Byfield forced the game into extra time with a 90th minute equaliser. The game went to penalties. Arsenal won it 9-8. Arsenal fielded their reserve side, but that didn't prevent them from taking the lead with an 11th minute goal by Jeremy Aladier. Francesco Fabregas became the youngest player ever to play for Arsenal at the age of 16 and he came close to making a scoring debut with that effort. But Rotherham sent the game into extra time thanks to an 89th minute header from Darren Byfield. That's his seventh goal of the season. The Rotherham were then reduced to 10 men when Michael Pollock was sent off for handling the ball outside his area, although he claimed it hit his head. They rolled them down to 10 men, but they held on for extra time. The game going to penalties, and amazingly, it was still even after all 10 players had taken their spot kicks. Then Chris Swales missed for Rotherham. In fact, the goalkeepers both took kicks and both scored. Viltor, who missed his first penalty, though, ensured Arsenal's place in the last 16, leaving the final score 9-8 on penalties. Um, Arsene, you wanted your young players to have an experience tonight, and they certainly had that. They had all of the experience you need, yes, and I think uh, you cannot find a substitute to that because they, they had uh, everything you can find in a top-level game and they did well. And the game was very tight with uh, them coming back when we thought it was won and uh, then the penalty shootout. It was sensational for them and it's a great experience and Rotherham gave absolutely everything, everything until the last minute and it was an interesting game. Did you feel <coughs> when the second goal wasn't coming that Rotherham may get an equaliser? Well, you always feel that, and uh, especially with the lack of experience we had in the side tonight. But uh, I think uh, certainly tonight we had the youngest uh, Arsenal side ever who has played in an official competition because uh, we had uh, boys of 16, 17, 18 years old in there, and they have done extremely well. And it's a great experience for them. Uh, what did you? Well. Manchester United to Fracar, they've been reprimanded for their future conduct, fined £175,000, a record for on-the-field offences. Uh, Laura in the four-match suspension, Martin Keown three, Patrick Vieira one-match ban, Ray Parler one-match ban, and Ashley Cole a £10,000 fine and a warning. Uh, Arsenal also warned uh, to ensure the proper behaviour of their players in future. OK, chaps, let's just have a look at the, the way this has caught the imagination of the papers. Uh, well, it's Halloween, trick or treat, says the Sun. The Gunners hit with £275,000 fine for this, the fracas, and then England get just four grand for the mass brawl in Istanbul. Uh, this is the star Brum's rush for top guns. Uh, unbelievable. FA handed Paltry four grand penalty for the brawl in Istanbul, but they slap a record £175,000 fine on Arsenal. And this one is interesting. A fixed penalty, says Harry Harris in the Daily Express. England, Arsenal knew their fate beforehand. Um, he says here, Arsenal were told that if they pleaded guilty, the FA would go easy on them. Henry Winter, what are your thoughts on all that? Well, I think Arsenal knew completely that uh, because of the behaviour of, uh, of certainly four of their players, that uh, the only way they were going to get away with the reduction, we were all expecting about 17, 18 games worth of bans until Arsenal came overall contrite, so, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And so th this was always going to happen. It was always going to be about seven or eight. The size of the fine... I think is, is eye-catching and it, it strikes me as the FA wanting to go for the headlines. The FA have clearly responded to the headlines in the first case, the fact that, that you know, they were very hysterical and, and rightly so headlines after the sort of the Van Nistel incident. But I think you know, the FA are responding to that. I think they're also, and Arsenal are the victims of this, is that there is a lot going wrong in the game at the moment and the FA are trying to sort of stamp down on this perception of bad behaviour. Bobby Gould, former Arsenal man yourself. What would concern me, Jonathan, that would be the players' reactions now, several weeks on and games on, when they see themselves acting as they are acting after the missed penalty. And I don't think anybody's really asked them that question. What do you think of yourself? What are you really doing to the game of football in that moment when you're all herding round Van Nistelrooy? And I, I would love the players to answer that, Jonathan. Being an ex-Arsenal player and playing at... Um, Old Trafford myself as well, because you have to be in control of your all, your emotions before the game, during the game and after the game. But those players, they lost the plot on that day. 
upset Blatter. It's over. Well, it should be over. £275,000 worse off. Arsenal and their players get the message. They may not like it, but the FA has had enough. What happened yesterday happened yesterday. I do not want to comment on it because I wouldn't be very kind. A four-match ban for Lorem will hurt. There's no obvious experienced alternative. But Martin Keown's loss will be easier to cover. Patrick Vieira may still have been injured anyway for the game he misses. Ray Parler's playing well, but replaceable. And Ashley Cole avoids a ban. So unless Arsenal's injury list grows, the FA's verdict won't ruin the title race, but should set a strong example. Not everyone agrees. No, I don't think it will be an example. Because worse things have happened since that incident without uh, the FA taking any action. So I don't think that uh, you can hope of any consistency at all. Many issues uh, for the FA um, to act on. It's acted first and foremost on this issue of, of what happened at Old Trafford Alley. Suggestions from, well, any number of quarters that a deal may have been done. Can you believe that, that Arsenal could, could do a deal with the FA over what sort of finance suspensions they received? Well, Matt, first and foremost, I think I have to say the image of football in recent weeks has taken an absolute hammering. Mm. It really has for, you know, some of the, the scenes where we, we just don't like, we mm. don't like it. We want to talk about the good things, but it's taken a hammering. And, and I think if there was any indication of a deal, I, I don't think there could be. I really don't think that there could be. The FA couldn't set themselves up with that. If that was the case, that would be the worst blow to the image of football. Yeah, yes, absolutely. The issue, of course, for Arsenal, now that the suspensions have been given, is what damage it does to their season. I guess the consensus view is that they could have got worse, Clive, but if you look at who misses what games, well, certainly it's, it's Lauren who they'll miss the most, not yeah, least um, because of the number of games. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be the replacement there to cover him over that period. And I think the, the one thing about uh, Arsenal is that uh, they came under pressure after the Manchester United game in terms of how they were going to react on the field. Mm -hmm. They've been fantastic in the results they've achieved. But the, this uh, stretch of games where they are going to be without players, it is going to test their squad to the, to the very depth of it, of, of it and certainly there's one or two youngsters that they've blooded in the in the um, Carling Cup this mm -hmm. week who will be called upon so it's a really test. They may well get Morris Voltz back from from Fulham as well I think they have a 24-hour recall on him. Um, Fines and Chris Hollins found manager Arsene Wenger in combative mood. Maybe a bad, bad thing. Over the top or too soft there's been a mixed response from the British media to Arsenal's record punishment, but as for the club and its players, who've had to fork out nearly £300,000 in fines this week, and with suspensions on the way, it's still a bitter pill to swallow. Some people are very happy that you got harshly punished, and some less, and uh, that, that we cannot influence that. Do you think you've been made an example of because Arsenal is such a big club? I don't think they picked on. I, uh, I think uh, this story is over and what they've done, they've done. I don't know that it's down to the FA to explain what they do and why they do it. We have just to deal with it. Ironically, this week, the FA were in trouble themselves for England scrapping Istanbul. But their fine from UEFA, just £4,500. For a real fine. But uh, you told me about, uh, asked me about consistency. That's why I say uh, consistency is uh, is impossible. Did you put that question to the football association about consistency? No, it's not down to. Uh, listen, I'm there to defend my team, and uh, I'm not there to make justice. Because it's down to the FA to get respected for their decisions. It's not down to me. I'm just there to to defend my players and my club which I will always do. Will there be a different approach to the way the team set out in terms of aggression, the way that the teams play? No, why? We, had, uh, we, have, we have the best record in the league since the beginning of the season, so why should there be a different approach? We have no influence on the punishment, but we have a big influence on how well we respond to the situation. And that's what we want to show, how strong we are and how united we are and how much we stand behind the players who have been uh, punished. Well, perhaps it's not surprising that Manchester United manager Sir Alex Ferguson has had something to say on this. I think Arsenal will be delighted with the, the decisions. I think that's without question. And, and I'm, I was reading the papers this morning, they did a deal before we went in there. And, and I think that was a suspicion right through the country. There was a deal being done. But it's disappointing to read that kind of thing. But 
For us, we win titles without having that procedure. We don't have that benefit, so we'll go on carrying on the way we do. So, seconds out, round 55. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, it, they definitely sent him to the doctor for, doctors if he wasn't going to have a comment about Arsenal. I think, generally, I think uh, the, the treatment and the punishment is right. I don't think I have any argument with that. We know about Mark Palios and his, his uh, new reign now as, as chief executive, that you know he's going to be strict. The, the way football is at the moment as well, it, it's full of bad stories about footballers and everything. They've still got the Rio Ferdinand affair and, and one thing or another and the other stories. So I think generally the punishment's about right, Mark. Now, Nigel, you've been involved in an Old Trafford melee before where they actually dock points from Arsenal. Yep. You know the club, you know some of the players still there from your day. How do you think they will respond to this? Well, they'll respond as professional players, really. They'll just um, forget about the, the incident. It's now gone. And they'll be concentrating on today's game and getting maximum points from that. I mean, uh, they can't change, you know, the bans that they've, they've been put in place. And, uh, you know, they'll accept those. They may be unhappy with them, but they will accept it and move on. Does Arsene Wenger use a bit of siege mentality himself? Does he use a bit of the everyone hates us, let's go and show them differently, or not really? No, I don't think so. I think um, what Arsene Wenger does do, and everybody knows it, is he defends his players to the hilt. And uh, no matter whether you think he's right or wrong, he supports his players 100%, because at the end of the day, he knows those players have got to go out onto the pitch for him and perform to the highest of their ability.